Hello again, this is Dr. Ali McGibble, and we'll look at uh, an FFT algorithm implementation of OFDM. We have seen OFDM, we have a few videos before this about OFDM. If you haven't seen them, please uh, watch them. Now we are focusing on the implementation of OFDM. The following Brook diagram shown here shows you the stages of the implementation. First, the incoming data, the NF bits, this is the number of bits in the sequence, is going to be divided into n groups and in every group will have certain number of bits notes the subscript b sub i is the number of group number of bit assigned to every group and it's not fixed so it's variable from one set to another from one carrier to another so we have nf the total number n tilde is the number of subgroups and bi is the number of bits for the i subcarrier so the first stage is that this sequence will be converted using serial to power buffer. So we have bits in every single. These are the bits that are to be sent to the multi-carrier. So we can say the following. We can say that a serial to parallel buffer notes the color match here. So the block in green is described in green. A serial to parallel buffer segment the information sequence in F. And n tilde is the number of groups and bi is the number of bits. So we can say that the sum of the bits in every parallel branch will equal to the total number of bits. So 1 to n tilde of bi equal to nf. That makes sense. Now, when we, when we go from the for the multi-carrier modulation, inverse DFT, we will have a carrier and bits assigned to it. So we have this kind of representation if you like on the right we can find the equivalent time domain signal by doing inverse fft or if you like apply idft so we have inverse discrete fourier transform that will take the representation and frequency and get you to the equivalent time domain later on we'll have to add a cyclic prefix but this is to be explained later then we have a digital to analog converter and at the output we have the opposite. I'd like to state here that the complex valued signal points corresponding to the information symbols on the subchannels X, uh, capital X, will be represented later on. So the data itself and every branch will be represented as X and that is to be uh, detailed later on in the equations. Okay, so we have, as I said, serial to parallel buffer, then we have the multi-carrier uh, modulator, which is the inverse DFT, and then we have uh, adding the cyclic prefix and parallel to serial converter. We have digital to analog converter. At the output, we have the opposite. So just to highlight this box, to modulate until the subcarriers by information symbols, which is X, we employ the inverse, for, in, inverse discrete Fourier transform. Now, this is a cyclic prefix. At the output, we have, here is the out, here is the receive antenna. Just like we have add cyclic prefix, we have to remove it. Just we have digital to analog converter, we have analog to digital converter. So kind of the opposite function or block diagram for the receiver. I did not uh, go into the details. At this slide, we just focused on the first two blocks. Remember, at the receiver side, because we have noisy data, we need to do a detection. So this was not there in the transmitter. So after we demodulate, we have to do detection to come back to, to the level that was uh, uh, transmitted. So this is the uh, representation of OFDM in terms of inverse discrete for transform uh, as uh, we explained. We're going to indulge more into the details as we go on. So let's just focus on the first two, and then later on we'll, we'll, we'll explain what's, what's the meaning of the cyclic prefix. Okay. Now, here's one note about IDFT, the inverse Fourier transform. Remember that there are certain conditions for real signals. To, uh, the spectrum magnitude has to be even. And 
the phase has to be odd. So if we compute the n tell the inverse, inverse discrete force transform for the sequence x, which is the sequence of information, we obtain, uh, in general, a complex valued time series, while I really want a time signal which is going to be transmitted. So and this complex valued time signal will, will not represent, will not be equivalent to the n tell the QAM modulated subcarrier, modulated subcarriers. So what do we do? How do we get a real signals? What we are going to do, instead of dealing with n tilde, we're going to create a vector that's capital N, which is twice the length of n tilde. And we will make it a cond conditioned, just to make sure that it has symmetry, what we call conjugate symmetry, which means even magnitude and odd phase. We're going to make this condition. The added sequence, so n minus k should equal to the conjugate of k. So this one should equal to uh, the conjugate of this. So magnitude remain the same. And as you go, this is equal to that, this is equal to that. So you have a symmetry around the midpoint. So you can see that this guy is equivalent to this, and so on and so forth. I'm just showing the magnitude spectrum, but if we sketch the phase, it's going to be odd. So one other condition to make sure that we have uh, the requirement for these signals and we have no problem is just to make sure that the first symbol here we're just going to get the, the real value, and the last symbol on the original sequence will be uh, an until the will be the imaginary parts. So x naught is supposed to be the original uh, series data. I will force the new x to have the real value here, and at until that to equal to the imaginary part. So this is an example shown in the, in the diagram here where until there's 32. So the created vector before doing the inverse discrete Fourier transform will be 64 with two conditions, just to make sure that we get a real signal. Otherwise, in general, we will not get a real signal. So the endpoint IDFT uh, yields a real value sequence. And this real value sequence, this is just the definition of the inverse discrete Fourier transform. So we have every value is multiplied by this uh, exponential. Uh, one of our uh, square root of n is just a scaling factor. So it's just a scaling factor. This can be changed with the power amplifier or so. Now, here is a, just to recall that we have the, the inverse Fourier transform where time is continuous, and we have the discrete Fourier, Fourier transform. So if you compare these two equations, you'll find out that we are choosing the subcarrier to be multiples of k over t. And if you take a discrete values where time is equal to n times t divided by n, so represent the samples taken at times t equal to n times t over n, then if you replace t, you will get the following representation. So replace t here with its equivalent. So the green capital T will cancel out, and you get uh, the following notation. So in this slide, we just show you that we have the continuous Fourier transform, or inverse Fourier transform, and we have the IDTF, which is the discrete version of that, where we look at time instances. So I replace the frequency, which for the case of orthogonal, and we replace the time. So this time comes as a result of this frequency. So uh, one way we can look at generating the, the OFDM signal is that you take the symbols, you use serial to parallel converter, and then you modulate individual carriers, and then you add them up to get the signal. Of course, later on, we'll talk about adding cyclic prefix. But if you look at this here, we're saying that the computation of this inverse discrete Fourier transform is equivalent to taking the data vector and then uh, multiply it by the following vector, which is, this is now the carrier vector, and we're going to multiply, so every carrier will have a different frequency, and these frequency bases will be orthogonal. So this is just a representation of how to generate the O of DM signals. We can think also in time, as I'm going to show in, in the next slide. If you want to think in time, then basically, you need to do, uh, after generating the discrete Fourier transform, inverse Fourier transform, we will have to do digital to analog converter, and this digital to analog converter will uh, 
guarantee that we have a continuous time signal. So this is how we do it. Of course, at the receiver side, the signal will be convolved with the channel C of T, the channel, and noise will be added.